We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. everybody joining us today on our online service from Temple of Praise, Anfield, Liverpool. We are so glad that you are able to join us. And if it's the first time that you are joining us, please leave a little note in the comment so that we know who you are. Today, let's just give Jesus and God our thanks. There's so many good things that he's done for us. Even in times of trouble, he's there with us. And we just want to thank him and praise him. I'm just going to read a little verse of scripture now for you. It's Psalm 96 verses 1 to 6. And let's get into the attitude of praise by reading this. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens, 
splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and just want to offer up our praise and thanks for the many things you have done for us, the things you have given us and the people you have put in our lives. Most of all, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us and the gift of the Holy Spirit to be with us as we go about our daily lives. Please be with us this morning and help us continue our worship without being distracted. In Jesus' name, amen.
I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you Lord Thank you Lord For all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord With a grateful heart With a song of praise With an outstretched arm I'll bless your name Thank you, Lord I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, done in my life You took my darkness and gave me your light Thank you Lord Thank you Lord You took my sin and my shame You took my sickness and healed all my pain Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to. I just want to thank you. 
Today's reading is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, being bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued you from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. In the passage of Colossians that was read earlier, Paul was praying that the Colossian Christians would be filled with the knowledge of God's will so that they would live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. He then went on to give four attributes of such a life, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power to have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks. When we go through the Bible and look at all the instructions and encouragements God's people are giving in relation to relating to him and walking with him, this fourth attribute comes up again and again, being thankful, giving thanks. What is thankfulness? One dictionary gives two definitions of the word thankful. The first is being aware and appreciative of a benefit. In other words, being grateful. The second is being expressive of gratitude, such as thankful service, a thankful smile. Other words used for being thankful are delighted, glad, happy, joyful, joyous, pleased, satisfied. On the other hand, words that describe the opposite of being thankful are displeased, dissatisfied, joyless, sad, unhappy. What does the Bible say about being thankful? The Bible has over 130 references related to thankfulness or giving thanks. 60 or so in the Old Testament and over 70 in the New. Most verses that call on us to give thanks go on to list the reasons why we should thank him, such as his love endures forever in Psalm 136 verse 3. He is good in Psalm 118 verse 29 and his mercy is everlasting in Psalm 100 verse 5. At the dedication of the temple in Solomon's time, at the rededication of the temple in Ezra's time, at the restoration of the walls of Jerusalem under Nehemiah, the people of God came to give praise and thanks to him. The Lord himself instituted a number of festivals, like the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Booths, and the Harvest Festival, at which his people would remember his goodness to them and give him joyful thanks. New Testament saints, and that includes us, are encouraged to be continually thankful. For instance, Ephesians 5, 18 to 20 says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Colossians 2, 6-7 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, 
strengthening the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Now, we know that when the Lord gives us lifestyle instructions, they are always for our benefit. Being thankful then is not an optional extra to be indulged in when things are going well. It is a vital daily component of the productive, joyful, healthy, and abundant life that God intends for his children. So why is being thankful so important for us? First, it shows God that we appreciate and trust him. James 1.17 tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from God our Father. God wants to be thankful for all the gifts he has given us, and there are many. Gifts of family, of friends, of food, clothing, shelter, the gift of health, the gift of a means to earn a living, the gift of people to help us, to pray for us and to support us when we are in need. And above all, the supreme gift of salvation. We are blessed when we have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. We know that no matter what happens, we have entered into eternal life with him. Our lives are in his hands. Appreciating all this helps us to remain humble and dependent. One thing it does do is to keep us from being arrogant and self-centered and either from believing that we have achieved everything on our own or from developing an entitled attitude. God, you're supposed to meet my needs and answer my prayers and give me the things I ask for. You're not doing it. So what's going on? Secondly, thankfulness brings us peace in the challenges of life. In Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here in this nation, we are entering a season when people do not know if they will be able to survive financially. Some are already facing choices between heating their homes and putting food on the table. It is a situation that is causing huge amounts of anxiety. God does not want the stomachs of his children to be churning with worry. Thankfulness focuses our eyes on God, on his goodness and willingness to help based on past experience, and he gives us the confidence to petition him. Paul and the churches that he was writing to at that time were going through persecution, harassment, societal pressures, and difficult economic circumstances. Yet he writes, for instance, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The message version puts it like this, Be cheerful no matter what, pray all the time, Thank God, no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. If you're going through a tough time just now, let me encourage you. In difficult circumstances, we can give God thanks that he is in control, that he's given us the strength to endure this far. We can look to him to provide what we need. And we have his promise in Romans 8, 28, which states, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good to those who love him, those who are called according to his plan 
and purpose. The people of Israel needed a hefty dose of thankfulness to get them through the challenges of their journey from Egypt to the promised land. Unfortunately, they didn't have it. As soon as things didn't go their way, water wasn't immediately forthcoming, the food wasn't what they wanted, they started to grumble and to riot, to threaten to kill Moses, and they turned away to look for other gods to worship. The thing that comes out again and again is their deep ingratitude. They were frequently displeased, frequently dissatisfied. In the end, it cost them their lives and their inheritance. They never entered the promised land. The lesson is that ingratitude he fuels unbelief, just as thankfulness feeds our trust in God. A third thing that being thankful does is that it builds our relationship with God because it increases our awareness of what God is doing in our daily lives. Let me give you a very simple example. We were going to go away for some days and I had ordered something that I needed. It was due to be delivered on the day we were traveling. And I knew that if it didn't arrive at the pickup point before we left, it would have been returned before we got back. Also, once the seller had dispatched it, it was tricky to change the delivery time. That morning, I said to the Lord, please help me to get this delivery date moved or better still, let the package arrive a day early. Later on that same day, I received an email saying, your package is waiting for you, please go and collect it. It was not a massive life-changing thing, but I was so delighted and thankful to God. Many of the things he does may look small rather than the huge interventions we would take as a sign he is answering prayer. And yet it is through these small things that God is assuring us that he is interested and involved in our daily lives. As we get into the habit of being thankful, we actually experience God being with us more and more. Being thankful is good for our physical, spiritual, and emotional health. Even secular research has caught up with this. An article published in Harvard Health Publishing last year was entitled, Giving Thanks Can Make You Happier. According to the research reported on, Gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. In one study, two psychologists asked all the participants to write a few sentences each week focusing on particular topics. One group wrote about the things they were grateful for that had occurred during the week. A second group wrote about daily irritations or things that had displeased them. And the third wrote about events that had affected them with no emphasis on them being positive or negative. After 10 weeks, those who wrote about gratitude were more optimistic and felt better about their lives. Surprisingly, they also exercised more and had fewer visits to the doctor than those who focused on sources of aggravation. The joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8 verse 10, and a thankful heart brings joy. Here's another benefit of thankfulness. It makes us generous and concerned about others. In 2 Corinthians 8, Paul says this of the Macedonian churches. Now, friends, I want to report on the surprising and generous ways in which God is working in the churches in Macedonia province. Fierce troubles came down on the people of those churches, pushing them to the very limit. The trial exposed their true colors. 
They were incredibly happy, though desperately poor. The pressure triggered something totally unexpected, an outpouring of pure and generous gifts. I was there and saw it for myself. They gave offerings of whatever they could, far more than they could afford, pleading for the privilege of helping out in the relief of poor Christians. Thankfulness keeps us from being covetous. It helps us to focus on what we have, not what we lack. Look at Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. When God had created the world in all its beauty, he handed the stewardship over to them. They had free access to everything except the one tree God told them not to eat from. When Satan came along, he focused their attention on what they didn't have rather than all they already had. The fall came about because Adam and Eve fell for that trick of the devil. True gratitude for God and the abundance he gives protects us from being deceived by the enemy's lies. Another thing Thanksgiving does is that it brings God's deliverance. In Psalm 50, verse 14 to 15, God says, Sacrifice thank offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. We will not know till we stand before God how many times he defeated those arrayed against us while we were giving thanks. So what can we do to help us be thankful? Let us look back to the definition of thankfulness. One, being aware and appreciative of a benefit, being grateful. Two, being expressive of gratitude. Thankfulness is not just something we feel, it's an attitude and it involves action. Here are just three things you can do to help you be thankful or even more thankful. One, keep a gratitude diary. Every day, take time out to write down the things you are thankful to God for on that day. Every good gift comes from our Heavenly Father. You may start on the list in the morning and then come back to it and complete it at the end of the day. But then go on and use the list as a basis for praying and thanking God that day. If, for instance, you're in a state where your mood takes a dive as soon as you get up in the morning, then definitely start the day with this practice. People use different variations of a gratitude diary. The point is this, giving thanks requires us to stop and reflect. Writing things down gives us a record to look back on and remember. It makes us realize how much God is doing for us now so that we are able to enjoy the present rather than stressing about the things we need or want the Lord to do in the future. Secondly, express thanks to others as well. Researchers have looked at how being grateful can improve relationships for example, a study of couples found that individuals who took time to express gratitude to their spouse not only felt more positive toward the other person, but also felt more comfortable when they needed to express any concerns about their relationship. Managers who remember to say thank you to people who work for them may find that those employees feel motivated to work harder. We know instinctively that we find it more rewarding to do things for someone who is thankful than for someone who takes us for granted. The appreciation we receive makes us feel that what we are doing is worthwhile and that we are important to them. Thirdly, tell others about the things you are thankful to God for. Get them to share with you the things that they are thankful to God for as well, so that you are all encouraged. 
God wants us to have victorious and joyful lives. He wants us to have inner peace and full assurance of his care. Let us cultivate a thankful attitude and make a habit of giving thanks so that we can enjoy to the full the abundant life that Jesus has come to give us. And if you do not yet have a relationship with Christ and would like to know him and to step into this abundant life that he gives, please do get in touch with us and we will help you. May God bless you and fill your hearts and lives with thankfulness, peace, and joy. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Madupi, for your word to us this morning. If anyone listening has any comments or questions they would like to ask us, please drop us a little note in the comment box or email us. We thank you once again for joining us and we just pray that you had a blessed time and that God has spoken to you. Let's just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this morning. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for being with us. And we pray as we go out for this coming week that you will be with us and that we will be the people that you want us to be. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.